Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Idea Center 310S 08 IAP. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to get inside, and many of the various components you can access once you're in. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your power cord. Okay, so I'm going to unscrew this screw here and this screw here to take off this panel. After that, you can grab this panel right here and pull it and it releases. To get the front panel off, there's these three black clips. We're going to pull out that one, pull out that one, pull out that one. Lift up the computer a little bit and the front face can come off. As a general computer repair side note guys, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your project, as well as any replacement or upgrade parts for this specific model computer, there will be a link above, also below in the description, and it will be a list of all those tools and supplies and replacement parts for this computer. To get this component up to access the internal components, we're going to push on this blue tab. There's an arrow on the tab, also an arrow here on the metal. You're going to push that in, and then this pops up like that. And that releases your hard drive and gets you full access to this area. You have a single RAM port right here. Now this computer takes DDR3 1866 megahertz RAM and you have a maximum capacity of 8 gigabytes. So most of you will have a 4 gigabyte stick that comes stock in your computer. So below in the description in that list I told you about with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer, I will have a four gigabyte stick there if you just wanna replace one that went bad and you wanna spend as little as possible, but I will also include an eight gigabyte compatible stick if you wanna fully upgrade and max out your RAM. The way that you operate RAM, there's two spring-loaded metal arms on either side. You would gently pull those apart from each other. The RAM stick will then release it will oftentimes pop up a little bit, and then you can slide it right out of that plug. To get RAM back in, if you notice, there's a long section and a short section, so you can't put it in upside down. It can only go in the correct way. You're gonna put it back in the port, slide it in, make sure it's even and flush, make sure that gold section is nice and even across, and then you just press down in the center, and those arms grab onto it and hold it in place. Keep in mind with a RAM upgrade, if you're here because you're trying to increase your computer's performance, its speed, uh, upgrading RAM, maxing out your RAM is a great way to do that. Probably one of the easiest and cheapest ways to increase your speed or your performance. If you want another idea to increase those, upgrading your storage is also a good idea. So this right here is a 3.5 inch SATA hard drive. Many of you will have a 500 gigabyte 3.5 inch hard drive stock in your computer like this one did. It can be upgraded to the max of two terabytes or you can do a 256 gigabyte solid state drive in an adapter. So if you're here to just replace a bad one or if you wanna upgrade while you're at it, Below in the description, in that link I told you about with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this computer, I will include a 3.5 inch, one terabyte hard drive if you're just looking to replace. I'll include a two terabyte hard drive if you're looking to have a little bit of an upgrade. And if you really wanna upgrade, I'll include an adapter along with a 2.5 inch, 256 gigabyte solid state drive that'll give you kind of the max upgrade for your storage. The way to access this hard drive, you have two screws here, two more screws on the other side, and you want to unplug all of these first. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now that all four screws have been removed, you can take that hard drive right out like that.
I guess the last thing to mention about this kind of an operation, if you do install a new drive to your computer, you most likely will need to install an operating system onto it for your computer to function. If you would like help with that, I will have two video links below in the description. One will show you how to install Windows 10, the other will show you how to install Windows 11. Also keep in mind if you have data on your old drive that may be bad or unusable, there's still a good chance you can recover data from bad drives. I will have more information about that below in the description as well. This right here is your CMOS battery. If you are looking for a replacement for this battery, I will have one below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts and tools for this computer. If you're looking to get this battery out, you would take a small, flat, plastic pry tool and I'm going to put it right down here near where this clip is. It's spring-loaded. I'm going to push that spring in and gently pop out the CMOS battery like that. If you are here to reset your BIOS, you would take that battery out for maybe 15-20 seconds and that will be sufficient to reset your BIOS. Now to get it back in, I will slide it underneath those black clips right there and then just push in on the other side and it snaps into place. A couple quick things to keep in mind with this operation. First of all, in most situations, this will only reset your BIOS system settings, not your BIOS password. If you would like more BIOS password reset information, check out below in the FAQs. Also, this BIOS reset procedure can be a common troubleshooting step if your computer is not turning on. If that's why you're here and you would like more help troubleshooting what's wrong with your computer, there'll be a video link below in the description. It'll be the full troubleshooting video on how to deal with a computer that's not turning on and how to fix it. This is your Wi-Fi card right here. It's held in by a single screw right there. Once you release that screw, the Wi-Fi card and this little clear guard can come up. I will have all the Wi-Fi card information below in the description if you need help finding your own replacement, but I will also include one below in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts and upgrades and tools for this computer. If you are replacing your Wi-Fi card after taking the screw up, you have these two antenna wires left. Those are just snaps. Those snap directly up and off of your Wi-Fi card. However, to get them back on, they do need to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to snap back on. And you are strong enough to damage them if they're not at the right angle and you try to force it. So just be nice and patient and go slow. It's kind of a pain if you're not used to it, uh, but you can get those back on. I guess the last thing to mention about this kind of an operation, if you are having Wi-Fi issues in your computer, if you cannot access your Wi-Fi options, if you can't see any networks, it's possible your Wi-Fi card is bad and you may need to replace it, but it's also possible it's something else. I will have a video link below in the description showing you how to fix a no Wi-Fi situation where you cannot access your Wi-Fi options. Hopefully you can fix it that way and you don't need a Wi-Fi card replacement. Your fan and your heat sink is right here. The fan plugs into the motherboard right there. Now keep in mind when you're trying to unplug things inside a computer, try not to pull on the wires if at all possible. Sometimes you can damage them and sometimes when you pull them, they can come right out of the plug. So try to grab the plug itself to unplug it from the motherboard. You have these four screws here to take your fan off. After your fan comes off, you have this little black bracket here that kind of holds it in place and cradles it. That goes at a slight angle compared to the other screws. And if you're looking to get your heat sink off, you have these four screws here. I guess the last thing to mention about this kind of an operation, if you are going into your computer and you expose the thermal paste above your CPU to air for any reason, it does need to be reapplied. Once thermal paste has been separated and exposed to air, it's no longer as effective as it should be. When you're reapplying thermal paste, you want to clean all the old stuff off first. You don't want to put new paste on top of old paste. And when you're reapplying thermal paste, you don't want to put too much. If you put too much thermal paste down, it could end up locking heat in rather than facilitating its transport out. If you would like help with how to do that procedure, I will have a video link below in the description. It will show me dealing with an overheating laptop. And one of the things it'll show you is how to clean off all the old paste and reapply the proper amount of new thermal paste. And one quick note on the thermal paste, they're not all created equal. So the cheaper stuff will do a good job, but the more expensive thermal paste will generally do a better job. 
in that list I told you about below in the description with all the replacement parts and tools for this computer, I will include a couple different options. I'll include a cheaper thermal paste if money is a really big factor, but I will also include a little more expensive thermal paste that will do a better job. These cables here have a clip on that side. You push that clip and it comes out. After going around the board and unplugging everything, you're gonna go after all the screws that are in the motherboard, and then you'll be able to take your motherboard up. But that's the end of this instructional video. I hope it was helpful. Please like and share if it was, if you think it can help someone else. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content, or if you wanna keep me on hand to answer any future questions, I do answer all questions at least a couple times a day. Remember though, if you do have a question, check out the FAQs in the description first. It could save you some time waiting for an answer. Thank you so much everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.